What's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, jumping in on this uh, Tuesday evening, 8.56 p.m. West Coast time here in California, and uh, it is March 9th. Holy moly, it's almost the middle of March. Latest quake on the globe, folks, uh, 5.1 out around the Iceland area. No surprise there, right? It's a pretty uh, significant size earthquake um, in that cluster of quakes that they've been having for... Uh, quite a few weeks now it just uh it's not stopping at the moment here on the usgs map you can see that 5.1 uh, 10 kilometers below the surface within that region of the earthquake swarming that's taking place in the southwest part of the area of the iceland region uh, to get a better look at the activity you can kind of see on this map as a whole too this is from the uh, Icelandic uh, Meteorology Office. They got um, a lot of options here when it comes to looking at weather, earthquakes, hydrology, um, avalanches, ooh, climatology, all that good stuff, uh, including volcanoes and whatnot. This here is the latest map. Um, shows the earthquakes, uh, hours since the earthquakes in the red, orange, yellow, blue, and dark blue right there, 48 hours. Been quite the uptick. Um, since about, uh, well, a lot of these are red, right? So within the last four hours, we've seen a major uptick in uh, uh, earthquake activity out there. Magnitude above, above magnitude three is going to be the stars right there. That's been pretty uh, significant uh, uptick. But also uh, within the 12-hour, 24-hour period window, we've seen a massive amount of... Uh, uh, an influx in earthquakes as well, which uh, definitely I believe is magma related. Um, here you can kind of see the oh the magnitudes, if you will, kind of increasing. Like I mentioned over the last 24 hours, you see the uptick here. We did have a little die down, looks like on Tuesday, Monday, uh, right around Tuesday, but uh, definitely an uptick there. Um, well. <laughs> The time zone here is a little different. Uh, I forgot they're they're kind of uh, ahead in the future, I guess, or are they behind? I don't know. They're way they're way past East Coast time, right? Uh, anyway, an uptick in earthquake activity there. You can see that uh, slanting up there, including that 5.1 showing up on the map. Um, there's a lot of information here on the volcanoes and whatnot. For the most part, everything is green except for in the southeast corner, a little orange uh, heightened unrest with increased likelihood of an eruption. That's down here in the south part, southwest part of the um, Iceland area. Let me see if I can bring up a different map here because this one's just kind of uh, kind of far out there. Uh, but I believe this has been orange for a while now. Let's add the uh, layers here real quick and check this out. The earthquakes, there's that 5.1 popped up here. It's a little ways away, folks, from this volcano. But, um, of course, magma doesn't just straight come up, right, from uh, the volcano area. It can uh, intrude from far away areas and, uh, of course, travel through tubes and whatnot, lava tubes, uh, to the volcano. But either way, a heightened... Um, Alert level, I guess, for this volcano. Uh, Chrysovic, is that right? To me, that kind of looks like Chrysovic. If not, correct me, please. I love it when people correct me. Okay, uh, looks like the last eruption was back in the 12th century. Um, activity status, let's see here. What else we got? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, largest known eruption. Uh, it's a shield volcano. Two such eruptions have occurred in the last 14,000 years. Such an eruption uh, is considered unlikely at the present time. But there's quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of information on this specific volcano here, um, including fissures and whatnot, uh, with with uh, lava coming out of the ground and whatnot. Uh, So 
So, yeah, it's uh, the longer this continues, folks, with this earth, earthquake activity, uh, I think the likely, more likely uh, that we will see uh, potential definitely, uh, definite volcanic activity there somewhere out there in the uh, Iceland area. And where this has taken place is kind of in this uh, little mountainous region. You can see a little, um, I guess that's kind of like a, well, not really a valley, but it's in like a linear fashion here that could pr uh, could show and uh, prove that this is potentially magma taking place uh, underground. But that 5.1 struck off a ways off of there, off of the uh, main swarming, so... This may kick things up a little bit. We'll have to keep an eye on this and see if it, uh, what it does. Definitely something to watch very closely in the this island, or not island, but this chain of um, volcanoes throughout Iceland there. Uh, let's see here. What else we got, folks? Um, yeah. Uh, but this site here, Iceland, Icelandic Volcanoes. Uh, is a really cool website to check out uh, earthquake information and uh, volcanic activity, including the other one I was on, um, but uh, which is the Iceland Meteorological uh, Center. Uh, let's see what else we got, folks. A little bit of activity kicking up, right, on that map. Uh, go back to the all magnitudes here and kind of look at this. We're still seeing some earthquake activity out here around the Kermadec Trench region uh, where that 8.1 struck a few days ago now. The activity has died down a little bit, right? Because remember, for a while, we were looking at uh, quite a bit of, of a huge cluster daily in this region. But now we're only looking at a little handful of quakes in the mid four, upper four, a couple of fives uh, magnitude earthquakes there within that region. We've also kind of seen the return of deep earthquakes there, 4.6 at 600 kilometers way down there, um, just just south of the Fiji Islands area. This here is prime area. If I, if I anybody asks me where deep earthquakes take place, this is it. They can take place um, all throughout this western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire and in Chile, um, but not this deep. I mean, that's, that's 600 kilometers is pretty deep. There's another one, uh, 400 and or. Uh, <laughs> 4.4 4 at 417 kilometers below the surface. That one occurring, uh, let's see here, after, it looks like after this, uh, the really deep one. So a little bit of movement uh, to the north, uh, kind of migration, I guess, if you will, some uh, pressure releases and increases around the Solomon Islands area. Uh, so be on guard for that. The western or the northwestern part of the Pacific Plate here around Japan pretty quiet over the last 24 hours. Hawaii looking uh, looking about the same as it always does out there. Beautiful island out the, there in the Pacific. Uh, a little bit of increase in activity around the Mauna Loa region. You can see that right around the summit. Some deep earthquakes there taking place south, south, not south, but uh, uh, underneath there. And some more swarming going on. Uh, that's been going on for quite some time there in the southeast part of the island. West Coast, California. What's going on out there? Not a whole lot. Uh, no big ones to report yet. 2021, who knows? That might be the date. Actually pretty quiet. If you take a look at this, uh, we're looking at a decrease in earthquake activity throughout the Southland here. Uh, no major movement. Little earthquake right there, or at least right off the San Andreas Fault System. There's this dark red uh, line there indicating the plate boundaries 2.4 near banning oh it's raining outside i can hear the rain that's thank goodness um but yeah nothing major to report folks uh, relatively quiet activity some more movement around mount hood in oregon and also mount rainier in washington we can check that out real quick on the trimmer map map at the volcanic seismicity region go to mount hood and a couple of those small quakes there just outside of the summit region. Let's see uh, see if this seismograph station will let us view it. Then I might go, whoa. <laughs> Let's see here. Well, it's raining pretty good out there. It's hard to tell on that specific station. Um... 
what am I doing here? Okay, let's go back over here uh, and check out the Mount Rainier region real quick. Yeah, no major swarms. This is some older earthquake activity, but uh, still some some microquakes taking place today. Nothing major. No uh, mo no uh, reason to be alarmed at all, for sure. Uh, a couple of small microquakes out there. You can see all these little ones, but uh, nothing big at the moment, folks. And as far as the actual trimmer along the Cascadia, um, let's go back there along the trimmer. Oh, let's see here. Pretty good uptick there in Northern California and Southern Oregon. Uh, this is the southern part of the Cascadia subduction zone. Underneath uh, the uh, North American plate right here, you got the Juan de Fuca plate uh, subducting. And um, obviously creating further pressure along the Cascadia locked section offshore. Uh, trimmer is movement downstream down dip where the uh, Juan de Fuca plate kind of slips underneath the North American plate. Uh, about 30 or 40 kilometers underneath the surface there. So a little bit of uptick in that region as well. Yellowstone National Park, a few microquakes popping off throughout the area. No major swarms to report. Uh, so overall, just a normal day there at Yellowstone. All right, guys, we're going to jump off here, get a little bit of sleep, some rest, and we will um, chat at you guys tomorrow. There is a little increase out there. In the Chile region as well, had a 5 point, uh, what was this one down here, 5.1 down there along the, uh, close to the subduction area here. So we'll have to watch out for further increased movement, also a little bit of activity. Um, just, well, it looks like, where is that at, right around the, uh, what is that, Gabon? A little 5.4 out there. Overall, just a, another day here on planet Earth with plate tectonics uh, uh, continuing life here on this planet. So have a good night, folks. We'll chat to you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there and uh, be prepared.